Guys, we are back for another Quick Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about the export settings that I use, that's right, this guy, for exporting my videos from DaVinci Resolve and uploading them to YouTube. So just a little setup of how I film my videos. So all my videos are filmed in 1080. I don't do any 4K cause I think it would kill my computer. And I just don't have the patience to wait around for 4K on this old machine. So I do all my videos in 1080 at 23.976 frames per second. Sometimes I jump to 24 frames per second. Sometimes I don't. Depends on the cameras that I'm using. So when I edit my projects, it's individual Resolve at 1080. And I have two different presets that I pretty much use all the time when I'm exporting my project once I'm all done. The first one is the preset that I use to export 1080 footage. Now I'll do this if uh, I don't have a lot of time to render a video or maybe uh, it's a long video and I just don't feel like, you know, waiting. I'll use a 1080 export. So we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna show you that and how I set it up and you can save one for yourself. The second thing I do is I take my 1080 timeline but I export it in 4k now why would i do that i would do that because i think that if you give youtube a little extra data in that file when they compress it down and just you know get it all set up for their website you kind of lose a little bit of quality at least i feel like you do maybe that's not true i don't know i feel like i've seen that you lose a little bit of quality as they compress it and just get it ready for youtube and the different quality levels and that kind of stuff so if you export it in 4k once you upload it, then it's got more information there and a better file to start from as YouTube does whatever it does to get it on their website and just get that video posted. So if I have the time and if my video is not too long, like I said, I will export it in 4K. One thing to note when I upload it to YouTube, it doesn't always give you the 4K options. Now, I'm not sure why sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. That's above my pay grade. Either way, it seems like the quality of my videos are pretty good and I'm happy with it. So these are the settings that I use. Maybe they will work for you. And if you're interested, you can pick up the files or just follow along and create your own presets. All right, off to Resolve we go. So you want to jump into the Deliver tab here, which is the little rocket icon down here at the bottom. Hit that guy, you'll be in the Deliver tab. Now you do have a lot of presets here if you kind of scroll along the top. Oh, first you might want to make sure you got your render settings up here. But you can scroll along the top. You see we've got YouTube presets. You've got different ProRes, different options here. And you're free to try any of those. And they might work just fine for you. Now I have tried the YouTube presets before. These guys right here. There's a 1080 and there's a uh, 2160. And I don't use the YouTube presets because I just feel like I get better results with some custom settings. So the first preset we're going to create is for 1080 video. A 1080 export. So let's start with our custom settings here. Go ahead and click on custom. So the first section here, file name and location. I'm going to leave that blank because it's going to change for every project. So I leave that blank. Don't worry about that until you get to your individual project. Next under render here, we have single clip. I'm going to select single clip. Next, we want to take a look at the video section first here. Make sure export video is checked on. I'm going to use MP4 as my format. You can use QuickTime or MOV if you want or anything else. I use MP4 because it's one of the uh, formats that YouTube recommends and works out good for me. I'm gonna leave enable hardware acceleration if available right here, check that on. Next we have resolution, that's gonna match your timeline. So mine's always 1920 by 1080. So that's what I've got here. My frame rate for my projects, as I mentioned, is 23.976. So make sure that matches your project, whatever it is that you usually work in. Maybe it's 30 frames a second, maybe it's 24, maybe it's 23.976. You can adjust that however you need. Next, under quality. Now this section is really important here. You can use automatic, but I find that does not give you the best results. So what I would do is I put on restrict to, and I've tried different numbers in here. My preset, that's gonna be 30,000. And I've used that for a long time. That seems to work out great. And sometimes if I feel like, eh, maybe I want a little bit extra quality in there, just a little bit extra. I'll go ahead and change that to 40,000. I'm gonna double click here, 40,000, and leave that right there. And that should give you a good balance between good quality and a file that's not ginormous. Because the bigger your file is, the longer it takes to upload and more problems it might cause you, more storage you need, all that kind of stuff. It just snowballs, 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 snowballs. The next sections here, we have encoding and entropy mode. I just leave all that on auto. I do enable the multi-pass encode. I feel like, hey, maybe it just adds a little extra quality in there. It's up to you if you want to use it or not. It does make the render take longer. It's up to you if you want to use it. I leave it on and it works out good for me. Keyframes, I leave that on automatic. Frame ordering, I leave that on automatic. Under advanced settings, I just pretty much leave all these as they are. You can see the settings here, color space tag, gamma tag. I just leave it as same as project because if I change in my project, it'll just keep the same settings here when I go to render. Down here, if you've got some other options, if you want to use your optimized media to speed up the render, you can do that or, uh, you know, render cached images. You can use that. That's all up to you. I don't check any of these on except for what was enabled here by default. 
and I just go with that. And subtitle settings here, I don't use any subtitles, so I don't worry about that. Next, you wanna come up into the audio section here and just double check this. You wanna make sure export audio is checked on, codec ACE, AC, that's your only option there, so can't change that. Down here, bit rate strategy, I leave that at constant bit rate. Data rate here, I leave it at 320, which is gonna give you some awesome audio coming out of DaVinci Resolve. If you don't know how to work with some audio, tons of great videos on my channel. Right up here is a playlist for you. Go check those out to learn how to get some awesome audio out of your video. Next, you've got sample rate. I just leave that the same as the project. I believe all my projects are 48,000. So I leave that as it is. Now you do have other options here. Uh, depending on the project that you're working on, you may want to export you know, more main outs or stereo outputs or mono outputs, whatever. That's up to you. But for the most part, for my YouTube videos, it's pretty basic. And I just render output track one, which is bus one, which is my main output. And if you're a little confused on how the buses work, here's a link to another video up here. Go check that out. I break down the buses. I try to make it simple for you and help you understand what they are, how they work, and why you use them. And the last section here is file. And again, I'm going to use a custom file name. And I don't fill any of this stuff out because it's going to get filled out up here for each project individually. Now, depending on your machine, if it's a little bit older and you need to slow down the renders because it keeps crashing or, I don't know, something's going on, you might want to change your render speed right here. I leave mine on maximum and I never seem to have a problem with it on my 2015 MacBook Pro. And double checking the video settings, once we're done here, looks good, let's go ahead and save the preset. So come up to your three dots here, click on that and you can do save as new preset. So I'm gonna call this uh, 1080 export YouTube. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So now just to the left of our custom icon here, you see we've got a new icon and this is gonna be where all your presets are. But the one we just created is right here, 1080 export YouTube. So let's say you're ready to export your project. You jump over here into the deliver tab. All you have to do is come here, find your preset, boom, hit it, and everything loads back up. All those settings we just saved, you're good to go. All you need to do is add in your file name and your file location. So if you're not familiar, just to show you how to add this job to the queue real quick, I just threw in a little, uh, little like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon here in my timeline so I had something there. You wanna double check render here, make sure it says entire timeline. And if you double check that before you set your preset, it'll make sure that you have the whole timeline in there. But I'm just gonna come, I'm gonna add a file name. I'll just leave it untitled. I'm gonna browse, I'll throw it on my desktop for now. And now just come on down to here, add to render queue, click on that. And it's gonna add that job over here on the right. And when you're ready to render it, just click on that guy and come on down to here and hit render. And it'll go ahead and render out using all the settings that we set in that preset. So let's say you got your 1080 preset all set up. But now let's say you want to export your 1080 video, your 1080 timeline in 4K. Here's the settings I would use for that. So again, in the deliver tab here, exact same thing we were just looking at. Let's come back to custom again. And we're going to create a new preset for exporting 1080 video to 4K. So you can start with that 1080 preset if you want, and it's going to be a little bit easier. So let's see, we have everything set here. MP4, I'm going to leave that at H.264. All these are going to stay the same. Now, what I'm going to change is right here, resolution. I'm going to go ahead and click on that guy. And I'm going to come down to 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD. And that's going to be our 4K export. So go ahead and click on that. So the next thing we need to look at is our quality setting here. Now this needs to be obviously higher because a 4K file is much bigger than a 1080 file, right? So we need to make this bigger. So what I've been using, if you come and double click in here, is 90,000. And I find that that works out pretty good. You can make it a little more, you can make it a little less. It's up to you on how you want to set that. But 90,000 works good for me. And for most of my videos, you know, they're not too long. You're going to get a file that's anywhere between like one and three gigs for a shorter video. Obviously, the longer your video, the bigger that file is going to be. So my long videos can be, you know, I don't know, 10 gigs or whatever. Like it gets pretty big, pretty quick. So that's why sometimes I'll use a 1080 export versus a 4K export. Just depends on how long my project is. So once you put in that 90,000, everything else, I'm going to leave the same. All my advanced settings, I'm not going to change any of that. My audio, that's already all set up. I'm not going to change any of that. And then up here where the file name is, I'm just going to make sure that those are blank. So let's come in here. I'm just going to delete these guys. And now I can go save a new preset for a 4K export. Let's go ahead and click on the three dots. Save as new preset. And I'm going to call this 1080 to 4K. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So if we come over here, you see on the left of our custom icon, we've got our presets. If I click the drop down, here it is. 1080 to 4K YouTube. So I click on that. It's going to bring up all my settings there. If I want to change it to my 1080 export, not my 4K export, click on that. There it is. Let's say I want to add this to the render queue. I'm going to go ahead and add a file name. We'll just throw it on the desktop. 
Gonna ahead and click add to render queue. Now you're gonna notice you're gonna get this error message right here. It's gonna say warning, are you sure you wanna add to the render queue at a resolution larger than your timeline resolution? And of course I do, that's why I selected it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. So now it's right here and you can go ahead and render that job out if you want. Now one more quick tip for you, if you find you're rendering out in 4K and it's still this little video in your 4K you know, frame there, here's a setting you might wanna double check and it's in your project settings. So come on up to file project settings and in here you wanna come on the left to image scaling and input scaling right here. Mismatch resolution files, I wanna scale entire image to fit and then output scaling, I wanna match timeline settings but mismatch resolution files right here, you wanna scale the entire image to fit. And this means DaVinci Resolve will automatically take that 1080 file, whoop, scale it up to 4K. So when you export it in 4K, it's actually gonna do more work in the background to blow that file up and make it a little bit bigger. Now there are more settings you can change to actually make your 1080 footage a better, higher quality 4K, but we're not getting into that right now. These settings should be all you need to know about to get your 1080 exported as 4K for YouTube. So if you followed along, you should have your presets made and you should be good to go. And if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below here and I'll help you out. We'll get you all squared away. So thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing your awesome videos on YouTube and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.